guys and welcome to another Fusion 360 CNC programming tutorial video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I do CNC programming tutorial videos, especially for home Mac and Wiki CNC machines using Fusion 360. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to program this cabinet for a nested based CNC machine. And this video is for those who program those nested base CNC machines and want to use Fusion 360 to program cabinet parts on those machines, okay? So I know I made um, um, most of the videos that I that I did in the past were about um, programming pattern rail CNC machines, okay? I made a video in the past um, about programming an upper cabinet for a nested base CNC machine, okay? So this is gonna be my second video, okay? So um, as you can see here, I have this cabinet. It's a small cabinet, a very simple cabinet that I designed for a customer, okay? It's all plywood, three quarter inch plywood, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, uh, lay every single part uh, flat for programming. And for that, I'm gonna use the range feature, which is up here, but I don't wanna do it here in a design workspace. I wanna do it in a manufacturer workspace, okay? I'm gonna create a manufacturing model, okay? So let's go to manufacturer workspace. And I'm gonna select this icon here in the setup menu to create a manufacturing model. If you don't see it here, if you don't have it here, uh, you can just click on setup and select it, okay? I have my added to the toolbar. Just click on these three dots and just check on this box, all right? So I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna select um, manufacturing model and I have the cabinet selected, okay? Now I'm gonna right click Edit manufacturing model. Now it's going to take me to these um, design toolbars. You see that? Within the manufacturer workspace, okay? Here I can um, I can make modifications to this cabinet, all right? I can create a hole here, cut on the side panel if I want. But in this case, I'm just going to select a range feature, okay? And I have this window here on the right side of my screen. It wants me to select, okay, the components, okay. I'm not gonna select every single component, okay. I'm just gonna select, I'm just gonna window select this cabinet. Now I have every single component selected, all right. Now, um, where it says objects selected by face, I have a face up, okay. And you see there's a, um, there's an option here that I cannot use. This is, uh, I gotta pay for this, okay? When you see that. Um, I'm gonna go to the next tab, envelopes. And I'm gonna select, um, now it's asking me to select a plane, a sketch, or a face. But in this case, I'm gonna select a plane, which I don't have here. So I'm gonna go to origin. Turn this on, I'm gonna zoom out. You see three planes that I have here. Okay, I have X, Z, and Y. I'm gonna select the bottom plane, this right here. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in. And you see I have the parts laying flat, okay? Let me put this on top of you. Now where it says length, this is where you're gonna type the length of the sheet. You see I have this in millimeters, okay? You can also type this in inches if you want, okay? But you see I have, um, I have the size here, which is 96 inches, okay? If you don't have any number here, you can just type uh, 96. See, it defaults back to millimeters. I'm gonna hit backspace twice. I'm gonna type IN for inches. And my width is gonna be 48. 
backspace twice, type IN. Now I got a four by eight sheet, okay? And I have this allow partial arrange, okay? And um, you see where it says flip envelope or envelopes, okay? You can just click on these arrows, okay? And it's gonna flip the parts. Now you have the parts facing down. And that's not what I want, okay? So let me click this again. And this is what I want because you see the grooves and this packet here, okay? And my frame width, um, which is right here, I have zero. My object spacing is, uh, is 10 millimeters. That's the space between the parts, okay? Depending on what size ML you're gonna be using, you're gonna have to type uh, uh, spacing here, just a little bigger than the tool diameter. In this case, um, in this case, I'm going to use a nine millimeter uh, two fluid compression end mill. So my spacing is ten millimeters. Okay. Now I'm going to click OK. Now I'm ready to um, ready to create a setup, but I got to go back to manufacturer workspace where I can see all my machining operations, all my you know two D and three D stuff and drilling stuff like that so i'm not to finish edit now i see all my uh machining operations okay and i'm gonna create a new setup and i'm gonna have to select um, the z-axis okay which is gonna be this soft face my y-axis is gonna be this edge and my box point just click on that it's gonna be this point right here. This is how my WCS is gonna be for that machine, for a whole micro or wiki CNC machine, okay? If you happen to have a different CNC machine, uh, your WCS is gonna be somewhere else, okay? Now I'm gonna go down to model. I'm gonna have to select a model, click on select. And I'm gonna select the manufacturing model, which selects every single component, okay? Let me put it on top of you, okay? Now you see I have, um, now I have the size of the sheet based on how many uh, components I have. This is not really the size of the sheet that I want. It's supposed to be four by eight, okay? Uh, you can leave it like this if you want, but you're gonna have to uh, add some material here, okay? Actually all the way around if you want. You can do it right here on the stock where it says, um, you see, I have, um, I have relative size box selected. So where it says uh, stock size offset, you can type three millimeters if you want. So uh, yes, um, it adds three millimeters of material all the way around. Okay, you can leave it like this if you want. You can just program it. And when you run it, when the machine is done cutting, it's going to park somewhere over here. Depending the distance that you have, I happen to have uh, 900 millimeters of distance. So um, the machine head is gonna park right here. So I'm not gonna have enough um, uh, space to take um, most of these parts of the table. I can just increase the distance if I want, okay? From 900 millimeters to let's say 1500 or even 2000 millimeters, okay? But I wanna have the right size of my sheet so right here on the stock mode, I'm gonna select a fixed side box, all right? And my width in X is gonna be the length of my sheet. So I'm gonna type, um, see everything's in millimeters? It's gonna be 96 IM for inches, hit enter. Oops, I hit enter twice. Let me go back to setup, right click, add it back to stock, but you see the model position is in the center. I need to shift uh, my WCS over here to this corner, right here, okay? So under model position from center, I'm gonna select uh, offset from left side minus X. Now having offset uh, distance here, I'm gonna type zero, okay? Now I have my WCS right, right there where I want it, okay? But I want to add uh, some material here. So I'm gonna add three millimeters, so I'm gonna type three. 
you see that, okay? Now I'm gonna type my depth, okay, in Y, and it's gonna be 48, oops, 48, I N, okay, select I N. Now I need to bring uh, my WCS down here. So model position from center to offset from, from front side minus Y. Select that. And I'm gonna type uh, three, okay. Now I have three millimeters of material here, okay. Now you see where it says height Z, I have 20 millimeters, okay. I want this to be uh, 19.05, that's the model Z height, okay. I'm gonna put it in front of you, so you can see I have some material added to the top and bottom faces, see that? So I'm gonna type um, 19.05, and this is what I want, okay. Now I'm gonna put it back uh, back to uh, top view. Now I got the right size of the sheet, okay. Now I'm gonna go to post process. I'm gonna name the program cheat underscore one. And my program comment is gonna be a uh, nine millimeter two flute. Compression and mill. Okay, I'm gonna click OK. Now I got my setup created. All right. Now I'm ready to start adding machining operations. And the first one is gonna be a 2D pocket. I need to machine these grooves. Okay. And I have a pocket here. So I'm gonna go to. Um, to the pocket, I'm gonna select my tool, go to wiki, CNC, wood, flat, and mills. I'm gonna select this uh, Amana 46367 dash K. So three A's uh, uh, diameter, diameter uh, M mill, but I have this uh, set to nine millimeters because that's the right diameter. I happen to uh, check the the diameter of that M mil with my calipers, okay? So this is nine millimeters, not 9.525, okay? Uh, millimeters, so it's exactly nine millimeters in diameter. So I'm gonna select this guy here, and I have all my fees and speeds set up for that M mil. Now I'm gonna go to geometry. I'm gonna click on this arrow, and I'm gonna select uh, pockets. Now I'm gonna select uh, the pockets, like the, um, the grooves in the pocket, okay? I'm just gonna select one and you see why, okay? I'm gonna select this one right here. And I'm gonna check on this box where it says uh, select same plane faces. Check on this box. And then select the rest of the grooves and the pocket because I have all the parts on the same plane. If I put it in front of you, they're on the same plane, you see that? Uh, my extension method, um, I'll leave it like that, tangent. You can play around with it. You can play around with this if you want. For now, let's leave it a tangent, okay? Let me click OK. Uh, I'm gonna skip a height tab. I'm gonna go to passes. And you see I have a maximum step, uh, excuse me, maximum step over 6.75 millimeters, okay? So I have an expression here, okay? I'm gonna uncheck this box where it says stock to leave. I'm gonna go to linking tab. And I'm gonna uncheck lead in and lead out. And my RAM type is gonna be not helix. I want a plunge. And I want a clearance. See where it says RAM clearance height? I have a 2.5 millimeters. I'm gonna bring it down to one millimeter. Oops. Okay. I'm gonna click OK, see what we get. Okay. And that looks nice. So um, let's zoom in. Okay, you see here. But you see it's not getting into this um, 
into these um dog bone fillers here. Why is that? Because I need a smaller end mill. Okay. See my radius is 3.69. That's the radius. Three point see the bottom where it says radius? 3.969. So I can either make this um this bigger. Okay, uh, or I can just uh, I can use a smaller end mill, like a six millimeter end mill for one. But let me make this bigger, okay? So I have to go to um, design workspace. Let's go back to design workspace. See, I have the cabinet here. So I gotta look for that sketch. Um, let me go to sketches, click on this arrow. And I think it's the last one. Yep, it's the last one right here. I don't have every single sketch uh, named, but I should I should have named every single sketch. Um, it's easier to find what sketch to that you want you want to modify. Okay. Uh, let's say you have so many sketches, you have so many components that um, uh, created. So it's helpful to have every single sketch named. Okay. So it's easy for you to find what sketch that you uh, that you want to modify. So um, it's going to be sketch number 18. I'm going to right click, edit sketch. Let me turn off uh, left side, top, right side, and I think um, not the bottom, uh, back. Turn off uh, fixed shelf, uh, the top fascia, bottom fascia. Okay, let me zoom in. And right here, so I need to make this fill is bigger. So I'm gonna double left click on this one. See, so I have a 516s. I'm gonna type 0 0.375. Hit enter. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Double left click on it. I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna select this dimension here. So it's gonna be D60. Type enter. So every time I, I change the size of this uh, fillet, this one's gonna change as well, okay? Now I'm gonna finish sketch. I'm gonna turn all my components back on. I'm gonna minimize this uh, sketches menu. And I'm gonna go to manufacturer workspace. Now I'm gonna have to uh, regenerate toolpath. See that? It says toolpath is out of date. So right click, edit. Oops, sorry. Right click, uh, generate. Let me see right here, okay. So let me simulate this, um, this 2D packet. Right click, simulate. Speed it up. Okay, so I was able to get to those uh, fillers here, okay. So that's great. Great. Let me exit the simulation. Let's say you want a hole on the top panel, of that cabinet. So it's not gonna appear here. Well, let's check. Let's go back to the sign workspace. And let me put a hole right here on this top panel. I'm gonna hit C for circle. Select this um, top face, the uh, top panel. I'm gonna just put it right here. And I'm gonna make this uh, three inches. I'm gonna type three, hit enter. I'm gonna finish finish sketch. And I can extrude it. So select extrude, or hit E key, uh, key on your keyboard. Okay, select extrude. Select a hole for that sketch. Okay, bring the arrow down. I'm cutting through the material. See operation cut. Click OK. Go back to uh, manufacturer workspace. And there's the top panel with a hole, you see that? Okay. So every time you make changes to the cabinet, they're gonna appear here, they're gonna appear here okay? That's really great. I wish I had this uh, like 10 or 11 years ago when I was doing CNC programming in AutoCAD. Um, you know, it was a pain in the butt. <laughs> Um, but most of my programming was done in Wookba 5.0, but sometimes I would, I would get some complex jobs like, uh, like letters, signs. So I would use, uh, AutoCAD 
to program those types of jobs, okay? So let me go back to the design workspace. And I'm gonna click on this arrow to undo, true, undo, undo, or you can just hit Control Z to go back right here, okay? So I was just showing you the hole, okay? And let me um, let me finish sketch. Let me go back to manufacturer workspace. I'm gonna right click and generate this toolpath. Okay. Now I'm gonna have to use a 2D contour to cut all the parts out. Okay. So uh, you can go up here and select 2D contour, or you can just right click, go down to create the rag operation, select 2D milling. 2D contour. I'm using the same M mill. Go to geometry, click on this X to clear everything out. All right. I'm going to click on this arrow and I'm going to select uh, face contours. And I'm going to rotate the model. I'm going to select this um, bottom face. And I'm going to check on this box. Okay, where it says select same plane faces. Check on this box. All right. Now I got the rest of the faces selected. Okay. And I got uh, all loops selected because I'm, uh, I gotta have, um, I want the outer loops and the inner loops selected. Okay. What if I select outer loops? Um, let's see what happens. Okay. Actually, inner loops. You see that? I don't have any selection, so it's got to be um, uh, all uh, all loops. So let's leave it like that. I'm gonna click OK. Under height tab, I'm gonna go down to um, down to bottom height, and where it says offset, I'm gonna type uh, minus 0 0.5. That's a half a millimeter. So the uh, end mill is gonna go half a millimeter past the bottom face. Okay, of every single component. I just want to make sure it goes through to the to the material. Okay. On the passes tab, I'm gonna check. Uh, I'm gonna add some step down. So I'm gonna check on this box where it says multiple depths. I have a maximum roughing step down of four. Uh, excuse me, five point four millimeters. I have an expression here as well, and that's the same thing for uh, for finishing step down. Okay. Let me scroll down and I'm going to uncheck uh, raw file. I'm going to click on these three dots and save as user default. I'm going to uncheck uh, order by islands. I'm going to make this a uh, user default. Save as user default. Okay. Uh, smoothing is going to be unchecked. Okay. I don't need that. I'm not uh, machining any uh, arcs or splines. Okay, I'm not doing any 3D uh, machining either, so it's gonna be unchecked. Uh, on the linking tab, I'm gonna have a ramp. Okay, my ramping angle is gonna be 15 degrees. And my ramp uh, clearance height is gonna be one millimeter. Let me click okay to see what we get. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna simulate this toolpath. Right click, simulate. And that looks good. Okay, kind of. Um, but let me go back. Let me slow it down, I'm gonna play again. So it's gonna start machining right there. You see that? It's still that 15 degree uh, ramp. But see, it's not machining anything, it's just cutting air. Why is that? Say it does now 5.4 millimeters deep. Why is that? Okay, let's fix this. Because um, I'm gonna show you why. Because I have um I have this top face as my retract height. Okay. So um I already machine. Uh, the grooves in this pocket, okay. So I want I want to select uh, 
I want to select one of these grooves as my uh, retract height. And let's go to um, 2D contour, right click at it. Okay. Let's go to height tab. Now, uh, my clearance height, uh, I'm going to have to select, um, I'm going to go down to selection. And I'm going to select this, um, this groove here. And my retract height, it's going to be selection. It's going to be this one here. I'm going to have to increase this offset. If I don't, you're going to have a, you're going to have a collision with stock. You'll see. I'll leave it like that so you can see it when I simulate this tool path. I'll just leave it like that for now. So uh, my feet height is going to be selection. It's going to be this face here as well. And my, my top height is going to be selection. This uh, groove. Okay. Let me click OK. And I'm going to right click and simulate. And I'm going to play it. See? I have a collision with stock here. See, it's a rapid collision with stock. So I need to increase the, the clearance. Okay. Let's go back to um, uh, tabs. I mean, high tabs. Height tab, sorry. And I'm going to increase my reach height to 10 millimeters. And I'm going to do the same with feet height. Uh, excuse me, feet height. Plan. Click OK. Let's right click, simulate. OK. OK, now, now that's what I want. See that? Now I got 5.4 millimeters deep. Okay, before the, the end mill was starting over here, it was like cutting air and it was, um, and it was making contact with the material. It was cutting about one millimeter deep. Okay. So that means adding more machining time. Okay. See that? Gonna do the same with the rest of the parts, okay? Okay, just sped up uh, the simulation, put it on top of you. That looks great, okay? Now I'm ready to post process this program, and I'm gonna open it up in. And WoodWaf 5.0 and WoodWaf 8.0, okay? So I got both uh, versions, okay? So I'm ready to post process this program. Right click post process. And I got the right folder. I got the latest version of WoodWaf, okay? And let me post it. Let's go to WoodWaf 5.0 first. File, open. Uh, this is the folder, tutorials, um, not really, uh, I gotta go to, oh, I gotta go to the D drive, select this folder, tutorials, and there it is. I don't want to save it. Okay, I'm gonna have to mirror the program, okay. See, it's in the wrong uh, mirror, okay. So I'm gonna have to go to view, mirror, in X. View, mirror, and Y, okay? This is where my WCS is gonna be, okay? I can just hit Control S to save this program. There you have it, okay? So next time I open this program in Google 5.0, it's gonna be in the right uh, mirror, okay? If I go to File, Open, I'm gonna select a different program, select this jig. Okay, it has an invalid format. Um, this one right here. Let me go to let me go to file, reopen that sheet one program, and there you have it. Okay, so that's WoodWap 5.0. Let's go to WoodWap 8.0. Okay, file, open. Um, 
wrong drive, but I go to the D drive. Uh, uh, right here, okay. Sheet one. It's gonna open a, a new window because I have this checked. It's gonna take a little longer. So I have the WCS here. So I'm gonna have to mirror it. But you don't go to view like uh, Wupa 5.0. In Wupa 8.0, you're gonna have it here. See, reflect in X. Click on that. Reflect in Y. Okay, click on that. And there you have it. And you can just hit Control S on my keyboard to save the program. Okay. And let me show the variables. You see, I have the offset all the way around. See that? P O X. Okay. See, part offset X, three millimeters. P O Y. Three millimeters part offset in Y. See that? It's hard to see in Wubop 8.0. Uh, let me let me zoom in. I know I say all the way around, but it's only in the back and the right. Um, uh, you can see it right here. It's hard to see it, but let me go to uh, Wubop 5.0. You can see it better. See, so I have um, I have the offset here in the back and the right side. See that? Okay. So it's doing a 2D packet. Let me select the last uh, trimming macro. See, so it's doing um, a perimeter cut of this part. Okay. Let me zoom out. Okay. So, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and also don't forget to hit the notification bell so you, you don't miss any future content. All right, guys. Have a nice day. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.